What's up guys, Chris schwartz Edmondson here from schwartz Edmondson Web Design. Welcome to a video series where we're going to be building out this mockup in Squarespace. When you receive a mockup, it can be very intimidating and overwhelming even, and you might not know where to start. So in today's video, we're going to talk about approaching the mockup and building out the typography and the color styles in Squarespace and just how to approach starting the project. So let's jump right in. When I receive a mockup, the first thing that I do is I take a look at the typography. Now, before I get started, I want to mention this design was done by Deanna at Simple and Soulful Creative. They're a Squarespace web design agency, and I've recently partnered with them. They brought me on to kind of serve as their developer, you could say. So she sends me these designs, and then I'm responsible for bringing them to life in Squarespace. So I think this video will be really helpful for developers to see my process. And also if you're just a designer, this will uh, be very helpful because you'll see what a good handoff looks like in terms of what I need to make my job easier as a developer. So Deanna does a really good job of leaving notes for me in the margins here. So when I'm taking a look at the typography, I also am taking a look at her notes. So one thing that she uh, has mentioned here is the fonts that she's using in the document. So she's using DM Serif Display Regular, DM Serif Display Italic, and then Source Sans Pro Regular. And just taking a look at this, I know um, the Serif font looks like every heading is going to be the Serif font. And she's also uh, mentioned like which font sizes she had in mind when she was designing this. So for example, here we see an H1 and an H2. They're both using that Serif font. Uh, and I'm just keeping that in mind and also noting that it looks like the H2 is a little bit bigger than the H1s. And then the H4 is also this serif font, but it's about as big as the body font size. And then here for the body font size, it looks like everything is gonna be Source Sans Pro Regular. So those are the things that I'm keeping in mind as I'm first just looking at this design. In this case, it's pretty straightforward. All the body copy is going to be Source Sans Pro Regular. All the headings are going to be using this DM serif display regular. And I'm also going to want to keep in mind that it's using italics in some places. So now that I have a good understanding of the fonts that are needed for this project, I'm going to go ahead and jump into Squarespace and start setting up my style guide. After I've spent some time with the design and have a plan of attack, move on to setting up the fonts. You'll notice I'm working from a pre made style guide here. I like to work off of a style guide for all of my builds because it allows me to see all of my typography styles and color settings on a single page. I made a whole video about this style guide, so check it out if you're interested in incorporating one into your Squarespace workflow. In terms of the font setup, I don't do anything too in-depth in the beginning. I mostly just get the font family set up. If you're working off of a mock-up and are given explicit font sizes, then you can set up all the sizes now. But for this design, I was instructed just to eyeball it. So I'll do all of my refinement later once I get the content in and I can better see the relationship between the different text sizes. In this case, the design required DM serif display regular and italic for the heading and button fonts, which is not available through the Squarespace options. So I chose the closest alternative I could find and then loaded the actual font through the custom CSS window using instructions from my CSS toolbox course. The reason I wanted to find the closest alternative in the Squarespace options is because if for some reason the custom font doesn't load, then that will be the font that is displayed. In this case, the custom font comes with both a regular and italic version, so I need to upload both versions of the font and then apply that font to each heading size. So now that I have the font family set up in Squarespace, I like to come back to the design and figure out which five colors I'm gonna need to be as part of the color palette in Squarespace. So one helpful thing that Deanna does is she puts all the colors that she uses in the design in a little swatch here. So I have a visual representation of every color that's used in the design, but she's used nine colors here and I need to get it down to five colors because Squarespace's palette will only accept five colors. So uh, the way that I whittle it down is I first look at the background colors and any really obvious brand colors. So in this case, uh, this tan color is a background color. This kind of uh, bluish color here is also a background color. This green color here is a background color. So we're already at three. And then 
if I scroll down, we also have this darker blue color down here. That's a background color. Um, so I'm going to pull that out as well. And we're already at four colors. And then the really obvious brand color uh, is this yellow color. But we also have white being used in the design. And then uh, the text color is this like really dark green color here. And that happens to be this swatch here. So even though I've whittled down the design, these are uh, pretty clearly like they're, they're not core colors to this design. They're just sort of decorative elements. Like these are gonna be images anyway. We have this other color here again, but that's just gonna be an image. Um, on our custom bullet points, like that color is used, but those are gonna be images as well. So it's not like a, these colors aren't like core colors that are needed um, throughout the, the website. They're more just like decorative element colors. So I know I don't really need those as part of my palette, but right now I have six colors that, that are used frequently throughout the palette, and I need to decide which one that I'm not going to have as part of the palette. Originally, I pulled out this tan color because it is a background color, but if we take a look at this dark blue color here, so it's used as a background color for the bottom of the footer section, but it's actually also used as text color throughout the design. So because it's used as a background color and it's also used as text color in the design, whereas this tan color is only used as a background color, that just made me think that it would be better just to have these five colors. So basically I'm choosing this darker blue instead of choosing this tan over here. And that's just because it's only used as a background color. And in my color theme settings, I can just set that custom background color. It doesn't need to be part of the palette. Uh, even though tan is used in this design and would make sense as part of the palette, I have to chop one. And so that's the one I'm gonna chop. So these are the five colors that I'm gonna be using. And that's just because they're used really frequently in the design. I know I'm gonna be using uh, these different colors in a lot of different color themes. So it makes the most sense to have them easily accessible as part of the palette. Now that I have my colors chosen, I like to open up a notepad and just copy all the hex codes into the notepad. And that way it's much easier when it's time to set up my color palette in Squarespace. I can just copy and paste the hex codes for each color from the notepad. Once I have all of the colors copied into notepad, I'll jump back into Squarespace and go to Design, Site Styles, Colors, and then Edit the Color Palette. And I'll copy and paste each hex code into the color palette. Now, the order doesn't really matter, but generally you want to work lightest to darkest, with the last color being whatever color your body font is going to be. So in my case, I'm making it that dark green color. Now that I have my palette set up, I can go into each color theme and apply the appropriate colors from my palette to each element. Now, if you have a color that you need to use that's not in your palette, you can flip over to custom. So in this case, because white is not in my palette, I have to use apply that as a custom color. But most of the colors that I am going to be using for these sections will be in my palette because we were so strategic about the colors that we added to our palette. One thing I've noticed is every time you finish editing colors for a color theme, just go ahead and save it and then go back in and edit the next color theme. It doesn't seem to really work so well if you just switch between the color themes using that little toggle at the top. So every time I'm finished editing a color theme, setting up all the colors, then I'll just go ahead and save that and then go back into the colors panel. So just a little tip there. So now I'm pretty much just running through each color theme, setting up the colors. In the beginning, I don't set up the colors for everything. For this initial run through for the color palette, I'm just setting up the background colors for each section, the text colors for each section, and the button colors. There's so many different things to change the colors of. Uh, I think it's better just to get a little bit of momentum so you can start building. And then as you add different section types or different elements, then you can start updating those colors as you build. So as I add auto layout sections, as I'm building out the site, then I'll go back into the color panel and edit those colors for whatever color theme I'm using it in. But for this initial build, again, I'm just changing the background color, the text color, and the button colors. So I'll let this run through. I'll do a speed run here, and we'll take a look at what the style guide looks like after I've finished setting up all of my color themes. Thank you. 
I have finished setting up all of the color themes, so I'm going to take this opportunity to jump into the site styles and go to the buttons tab and change the button shape to pedal to match the mockup. And now we can take a look at the style guide. I have all of my font families set up for my headings and for my body. And now I have all of my colors set up as well for each of the different color themes. So now I have the website in a really good spot to go ahead and be ready to start building out the mock-up, going through section by section on the homepage and designing out each section. All right, I hope this video was helpful. Just showing my process for how I attack a mock-up and get started in Squarespace setting up the typography and the colors. In the next video, I want to walk through the finished website homepage that I built out, and I want to show you some tips and tricks that I use to bring such a complex mock-up to life inside of Squarespace. So there should be some really good takeaways from that video. So if you're interested in seeing the next video come out, make sure you subscribe so you are notified when the next video is released. All right, that's it for me. I hope to see you in the next one.